how powerful is Homelander compared to other heroes and villains? Welcome to Trick Theory, the channel where I show you what happens when you don't learn the skills to treat those around you well. John Gilman, who otherwise came to be known as the evil Superman Captain America-like hero Homelander, was thought by the public to be an alien who arrived to Earth as a baby and was raised by his loving adopted family in a small town. In reality, Homelander was part of a series of twisted experiments by the company who released his fake backstory, Vought American, who grew John in a lab in 1981 along with six other children. While in their respective wombs, each of the children were given copious amounts of a secret drug known only as Compound V, a powerful dark blue chemical created by Nazi scientist Frederick Vought back in World War II that gives both humans and animals alike amazing abilities. But be it with some very bad story-like side effects to worse, lowering someone's bone density, causing heart problems, severe sickness, and has been noted to be fatal in adults without powers after three doses. The powers that someone gets from Compound V seem to manifest randomly, and for unknown reasons, the serum has a far higher success rate the younger an individual is when exposed. So, infants, with Homelander saying that injections in adults is very difficult, very messy, and that there's a good reason that Vought doesn't do it. Although Vought is hard at work trying to create a serum that works on adults with minimal side effects. For injected infants like Homelander, there seems to be a latency period before they begin to exhibit their powers, with Homelander being given an incredibly high dose among his peers, one that he was possibly able to survive and then thrive from as he is the biological son of America's first and greatest superhero, Soldier Boy. With Soldier Boy or Benjamin, who was also given a fake backstory to the American public during World War II, after he approached and volunteered to be part of a special test within the American War Department under Dr. Frederick Vaught, where he was given one of two perfected Compound V serums, capable of working on adults and producing much stronger superpowers than the serum used by modern day Vaught. Initially, Homelander was a sweet child, like any other, who was noted by the lead scientist Dr. Vogelbaum to have loved cuddling up to him and reading stories of Davy Crockett and Teddy Roosevelt. However, the company wanting to make John the strongest superhero in history began subjecting John to painful experiments and surgeries to test the true limits of his powers. As he had his hand stuck in a furnace, was boiled alive, forced to fight strength-enhanced guards to hone his combat abilities, and he had to spend hours on end in front of a projector that displayed images of Jesus, the American flag, and anything American really to help him turn into a marketable patriotic superhero. As a child, Homelander, craving for connection, accidentally killed many of his female tutors by hugging them to death, eventually developing, in the very least, something like a dissociative identity disorder, where to cope with a trauma received from places like the bad room, an individual develops multiple distinct personalities that control their behavior at different times, with this condition also causing memory loss, delusions, and depression. Thus, Homelander becoming aggressive, violent, and hateful, then turned to the one thing that gave him any sort of escape, being the hours of films and footage on his favorite hero, Soldier Boy, watching all of his movies hundreds of times, respecting Soldier Boy as the only hero he believed who was nearly as strong as him, coming to idolize him, not knowing that they were actually father and son. With John eventually coming to be the leader of Vought's infamous group, The Seven, and downing an American flag as his cape, he finally went public, not knowing that other individuals within the group were created to stop him if he ever went rogue. As much as this episode highlights what happens when you severely neglect the soft skills that a few doctors and tremendous coaches I worked with had in spades, while others clearly did not get the memo, what are Homelander's most powerful feats? Homelander has been shown to be able to casually toss what appears to be a Harriet jet across a hangar with just one hand, which has a maximum takeoff weight of close to 12,000 kilograms or 26,000 pounds, meaning that he can easily lift up pretty much any plane including the near 130,000 pound or 59,000 kilogram 737 jet or its older 203,000 pound or 92,000 kilogram counterpart no problem. But he couldn't lift it mid-flight without his hands puncturing through the hole, much like someone trying to carry a watermelon with two needles. Or like he tried to do in the comics, straight up 
up, rip the plane in half. Then, much like we calculated in the Invincible series, Homelander throws a baseball in New York that is said to most likely land somewhere in Boston, with Boston being about 190 miles or 305 kilometers away. Let's say this baseball takes about 15 seconds to land in Boston, which would give it a speed of over 45,000 miles per hour or 73,000 kilometers an hour. And not being as harsh as Omni-Man's death orb would still do a lot more damage than just killing somebody. If the baseball wasn't to simply disintegrate, which it would likely do, let's say that this baseball is special. And upon impact, acting similar to a miniature asteroid would likely shatter nearby glass windows, if not windows a couple miles outwards, and would produce a sizable-ish shockwave and heat blast that would kill and injure any nearby people. But perhaps Homelander's greatest testament of his strength comes from Black Noir, who being a Homelander clone that was created to destroy him in the event that he goes rogue, Black Noir's strength is supposed to be equal to, or as the comics foreshadow, even stronger than Homelander, but that may be a big if. However, when one of the series' protagonist Huey speaks his mother's milk, Milk theorizes that Black Noir, or in this case Homelander, is capable of lifting up about a dozen Mack trucks at once, which may not be as helpful of an estimation as it sounds, as a Mack truck is essentially a large frame, being a cab and an engine by which a range of equipment can be installed upon, like cement mixers, dump trucks, fire engine configurations, having many different engines and parts. But let's say Homelander was able to lift 12 of one of the heaviest Mack truck configurations we can find, like a Mack Titan, equipped for logging or oil fields that could weigh somewhere upwards in the park of 92,000 pounds or 42,000 kilograms. This means that Homelander would be capable of bench pressing upwards of 1,104,000 pounds or over 500,000 kilograms in one go. And as strong as he is, his strength really isn't his most powerful feature, given that he has used it to overpower a souped up butcher, Huey, and Soldier Boy at once, quickly flying away. When it comes to Homelander's speed, when searching the city for his teammate Translucent, we see him clocking in at speeds of 1,872 kilometers per hour, or just under 12,000 miles an hour. He has also reportedly moved fast enough to disarm a group of three men, moving fast enough to grab their guns in a mere moment, easily dodging all of their bullets. Which makes sense, as he was able to fly fast enough to break the sound barrier, or move at 767 miles, or over 1,200 kilometers an hour. He has also outran a C4 explosion to save Billy Butcher, which means in order for him to outpace the explosion of a C4 device, which looking at the velocity by which this explosive changes to its gaseous form, rapidly decomposing to release gases like nitrogen, water, and carbon dioxide, means that Homelander would be moving over 18,000 miles an hour, which is nearly 30,000 kilometers per hour, or 23 and a half times the speed of sound. Beyond his super speed, Homelander has some incredible super senses, being able to smell the scents of people that still linger on those around him that they may have interacted with the day before. He can hear a person's blood pressure, their fingers typing to send a text on their phone hundreds of feet away, with his x-ray vision being able to see through anything except zinc. And he has heat vision that can easily cut a person in half or explode their heads. That, if it's anything like Superman's heat vision, can get up to around 5 to 7,000 degrees Celsius, or about as hot as the surface of the sun. But out of everything we've discussed, Homelander's true strength is his durability. This has allowed him to easily fly at supersonic speeds through pretty much anything and anyone. When Queen Maeve attacked him with her sword it broke on his head, he's easily bulletproof and is able to take pretty much anything anyone could think to throw at him. Homelander has had a metal straw jammed in his ear that he then pulled out, and possibly healed quickly due to him possessing a minor healing factor, with his superhuman stamina making it so he rarely gets tired. And he is so durable that until he was 18 years old, Vought had to keep a hydrogen bomb chained to him at all times, because they had no idea what else could possibly kill him. With the hydrogen bomb strapped 
kept him basically being 1,000 times more powerful than the atomic bombs used in World War II. But if none of this was very interesting, then I saved an interesting fact for last. The one superpower that Homelander possesses that may have gone unnoticed is that he has the power of longevity, or rather de-accelerated aging, making him able to live for hundreds to possibly thousands of years, much like Omni-Man and Invincible whose ridiculous powers and feats we go over in these videos. And remember, it's all just a trick. See you in the next one.